Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. If you're wondering to yourself, Chad, well, if you're watching on YouTube, yeah, <laughs> Chad, why are you sitting in Tori's chair? Well, <clears throat> that's because whenever we set everything up for unveil, Tori takes my set. And so <clears throat> rather than uh, reset up all that, I just said, you know what? I'm going to pop a squat in her chair and actually feels very nice over here. I think she got lucky with the side that she chose. Do, do you all have a side that you'd like to be on when you take photos or anything? Because Tori definitely has a side that she prefers. And I get stuck on the side that I don't know if I prefer it or not because I'm, I'm stuck there anyway. So it's probably better that I don't know. Anyways, sadly, we are rounding out. There we are. Sadly, we are rounding out with day five of our Wisdom from Old Testament Stories devotional on the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, and then I'm also going to pick with the Devo. And there's a lot of scripture with this one, and I'm going to specifically focus on Genesis chapter 50, but I know I'm just babbling right now, but there is scripture all the way starting from Genesis 37. And so there's a lot there. So if you guys do want to pause and go read it, if you are feeling zealous, then go do it because it's worth it. But the scripture I'm reading is Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21, and it says this. But now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him, they said. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, please forgive your brothers for the great wrong they did to you, for their sin in treating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of the God of your father, beg you to forgive our sin. When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph replied, Don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. The devotional is titled, Joseph and His Brothers. The story of Joseph comes from Genesis, the first book in the Old Testament. He's the son of Jacob, whom God eventually renamed Israel. Joseph's life is one filled with hardship. His brothers sold him into slavery at age 17. He was wrongly accused for sexual misconduct and was imprisoned for about a decade. But eventually, Joseph was remembered for his ability to interpret dreams, and he was called into into service by Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, Genesis 39 through 41. The famine Joseph predicted began, and his brothers arrived in Egypt to get grain. Their father sent them to buy grain, but they didn't know that the person selling the grain was the brother they sold into slavery, Joseph. A series of events transpired between Joseph and his brothers before, uh, before he revealed his identity to them. While there is much we can learn from this story that encompasses over 20 years of time, here are two things we should look at and consider implementing into our own lives. Number one, Joseph grew where he was. If you read through the entire encounter of Joseph's life that spans from Genesis 37 to Genesis 50, you'll see a man who succeeded and grew wherever he was. When he served Potiphar, he found favor with him. When he was in prison, he was put in charge by the warden. And when he finally was released after interpreting Pharaoh's dreams, he was given control of the entire kingdom right beneath the king. Joseph grew and prospered where he was. He didn't wait to lead at age 30 once he was given power by Pharaoh. He led well and was honorable even in bondage. And he eventually led with strength and wisdom that ended up sustaining people through a seven-year famine. And number two, Joseph saw the big picture. God used all of the hardships Joseph endured to bring a persecuted man to power over and over again. Yet, even though he had favor with God, with both God and man, we can assume that there must have been deep sadness at being betrayed by his brothers and torn from all he ever knew. Through it all, we see that Joseph saw a different picture than the temporary one. Ooh, that's good. He was able, by God's grace and wisdom, to put all the puzzle pieces of his life together to see how God allowed all of it to prevent mankind from starving in the famine. He didn't hold his brothers responsible for something he believed God was doing. He trusted in the broad picture held by God that used him to change the world. 
No matter where we are or what our situation is, let's choose to grow wherever we are. Let's recognize there is a bigger viewpoint that we don't always see. And let's fully embrace and trust our God as he guides, directs, and orchestrates his purposes in our lives and for mankind. And I don't really have a specific direction I want to take this one. Honestly, I just kind of want to let it like minister to my own heart and minister to y'all's heart is this is such a tough thing to think about. It's easy to read scripture, right? You read it and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I see Joseph is in jail, but I know it's going to happen. And so you kind of we don't always acknowledge how we would feel in that situation. And I'm not saying that we go practice ice to Jesus where we just make scripture all about us. But what I'm saying is, is that we sometimes are wondering, God, where are you? Where are you? Why are you not helping me? Why are you absent? What's happening? Why am I being persecuted? Why, why am I being sold into slavery? Why am I dealing with this? Why are people accusing me of things I didn't do? We do that all the time. And, we read stories like this and we're not always that encouraged because we, we fail to see that there was like, there was like a decade happening there. There was 10 years that he was likely imprisoned. That's 10 years. That's a ton of time to sit there and just dwell and mourn and get bitter and resentful. That's a lot of time to start to lose trust and faith in God. And he on the other side, grew in his relationship with the Lord. He grew where he was planted, even on bad soil, what, what was perceived as bad soil, even though God knew it was good soil because God was working on it because he's the gardener. That'll preach. But it was just something so magical about his ability to take a situation and still be a human and recognize that, that excuse my French, that situation sucks. But he used it for God's glory. And it was never about the pride about what he deserved because he was just a good kid and he's getting something bad. It was about how is God moving inside of this and what is God up to? And I just think that's really powerful. I know I said I didn't have a direction to take this one in, but I think that's just what I'm trying to feel in my own heart is trying to say, Chad, in those seasons where you feel like there's no way out, don't forget that there are other people who wandered in the wilderness. There was other people that were being persecuted for, for years for year, for longer than I've been alive, and maybe longer than you've been alive too. That's how long they were in bondage or in jail or in pain or in persecution. And here I am complaining about my comfortable life. And that's not to say that things aren't hard. That's to say that don't lose hope. Don't lose hope and don't start saying things that God has just given up on me and I'm no good and I can't be used here. I need to be used that way. I think that's that's the big crux of this is that we can't demand God use us in the way that we want him to. We are the creation, not the creator. And so God will use us the way the creator determines. And you see beautiful stories like this about all of Joseph's life. You see in different situations where really high highs and really low lows and God used them in every situation and God is using you right where you are. And so the best place for you to grow is right where you are. The best place for me to grow is right where I am and focus on making sure that I'm doing what needs to get done to keep my, my faith strong in the Lord, to water that soil, to be around the sun the S-O-N sun, to really bloom and grow right where I am. Because even if maybe dark around you, there's no darkness that can eliminate the light of Christ in you. And so let's not forget that, that things may appear dark, but that's when light shines the brightest and you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. So yeah, I'm going to get off my soapbox. Lord, thank you for such a wonderful devotional. Lord, help us to spend more time in the, Old, in the Old Testament being encouraged by how you moved in people's lives, Lord. Help us have our faith strengthened by these wonderful stories, by these wonderful messages. Help us to take those hard hardships, those persecutions, those years in bondage or isolation or wandering, whatever it may be, God, and help us ask you, God, what are you up to? What are you doing? Help us to give you the benefit of the doubt, knowing that you work all things for good 
for those who love you and are called according to your purposes. God, open our eyes to those things. Help us recognize that even though people intend bad to us and the earth in its shattered form and its broken, diseased form will intend bad for us, but you will use it for good because that's how good you are, God. And we don't need things to be perfect right now for them to end up perfect. Praise God. We love you, Lord, and we pray in your son's heavenly name. Amen. Amen, y'all. Now is that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece, and don't forget that we love you. We love you, and we'll be talking tomorrow. I'll be the same.